What is happening, everybody? Thanks for checking out Hunt, Shoot, Live. Super pumped about today's episode because this is my second review into a really new category for me. I have hunted and shot guns my entire life. Shot cheap pellet guns and BB guns um, since I was a kid. Old Crossman BB gun. But only recently, I, I put out my first video with the uh, the Gamo Swarm uh, 10X Magnum 22 cal, and really just enjoyed that. And it was so different from what I'm used to uh, shooting center fire, and um, or even rim fire for that matter. So I actually picked up another one. Uh, I picked up the Gamo Swarm Whisper 10X in the 22 cal, and. Um, I'm excited to not only try this out, but I'm excited to compare because this one came in at, at, at about a hundred dollars less than what the Gamo Swarm Magnum came in at. And again, this is the Gamo Swarm Whisper 10X. Um, so what I want to do today is just give you the general overview, and then I'm going to take it outside and do exactly what I did. In my other video with the Magnum, I'm going to test this at 30 yards, 50 yards, and 100 yards, and we'll just see how it do, how it does. We'll see how it stacks up to what my results were with the more expensive, um, faster shooting uh, Magnum version of this. So, um, the basics of the Swarm Whisper 10x 22 cal. Of course, it's a gas piston, brake barrel design. Um, Super easy to crack open. It has the 10 shot magazine, as you will find with all of the 10X. Uh, really, really handy to easy to load and slap that in there. And it self loads every time you break the action, it loads you another one in. Of course, this includes the Gamo Whisper sound suppression technology. Super quiet. It is advertised to shoot the alloy pellets at about a thousand feet per second. So I assume that that means that the lead pellets, which is what I have right now for this test, uh, are going to be going a little bit slower than that. But hey, we'll see. We'll see what it does at, at 50 and 100. Um, it comes with, or the package that I bought anyway, comes with the Gamo uh, 4 power, fixed 4 power by 32 millimeter objective scope. Now I opted, um, some people on my previous video commented that these guns actually are, are kind of notorious for knocking scopes off. So I actually put a Tasco that I have had uh, many years ago. I, I had them on some high-powered rifles, and over the years I've upgraded my scopes. But at one point in time, this Tasco was on a high-powered rifle, and I had no problems with it whatsoever. So I took the scope that came with the Gamo, and it is just sitting back there at my workbench, and I put this Tasco 3 to 9 power. Uh, which that's another upgrade instead of the fixed four power i've got a three to nine power on here so i've got it all mounted up i've got it uh, sided in and i'm excited to do some testing on it now just a couple other notes um for comparison's sake to the other gamos you know of course it's got the, the synthetic stock the all-weather stock you've got that same manual trigger safety that you find in the other uh the gamos or specifically in in the gamo swarm Magnum that I tested and of course you got your rubber butt pad not that you Need a rubber butt pad with this thing because it doesn't really kick but um, it, it feels good. It's definitely not heavy uh, it uh, looks good and Will the only thing left to see is is how does it shoot does it shoot good? It is advertised to be primarily made for hunting as the number one use and then for like pest control and recreational shooting is the number two use and it actually lists sort of as the number three use uh, targeting competition shooting so you know I'm assuming they're kind of encouraging you that uh, to, to buy a little more expensive if you're specifically wanting super super accurate so let's see let's see how uh, how that plays out let's see how accurate this thing is and let's get it out and test it you ready to lay down at 30 yards I've already got it zeroed in set up 30 yards, I'm gonna take five shots. I just wanna see how this compares to more expensive Gamos, and specifically the Gamo Swarm that I tested, uh, the, the 10X Magnum. So I'm set up at 30 yards. I am gonna test 30 yards, 
50 yards and 100 yards with the Gamo Swarm Whisper 22 cal. I'm going to do five shots at each range. So I had all five hits. My turkey's going crazy, he's hilarious. It's almost breeding season, so he's going nuts. Every time I pull the trigger, he would gobble. But I was aiming right here at the X, and uh, I've got all five shots right here. One, two, three, four, five. Uh, I will note, and some of you guys told me on your comments on my first video that I did with, that, uh, with the 10X Magnum, that you have to hold it because the recoil is different from centerfire rifles. Um, you all are right. I'm seeing it. Uh, you guys can please go to my channel, check out my other videos. It's got a ton of awesome long range shooting with centerfire rifles, and I'm really big into that. New to the air gun thing, and with a centerfire rifle, it is it is okay to let it free recoil. You know, you, you don't want you don't want anything changing the the movement of the gun. But it, it looks like with this, and and uh, there is some different schools of thought. I'm seeing that already from your all's comments. But um, I cited this in based on a couple uh, readers or viewer suggestions to hold down firmly and to not let it bounce. So to try to pull it back against my shoulder uh, hard, and and that's how I cited it in. I was getting some really good groups, and I did not when I was doing this. I let it free recoil. And you can see that it jumps. I was aiming here, and it was jumping up and to the right, which makes sense. You know, I'm right-handed, so when I would pull, it would pull to the right. So uh, we'll see how big that gets exaggerated whenever I do it from 50 yards. But uh, I, I'm going to do another video, and I'm going to test the difference between different holds, having it in a in a uh, like a tripod mountain, and holding it free recoiling it. I'll do that video, not this time, but. Uh, <laughs> Just kind of wanted to give you guys that nod that I am seeing that that's obviously quite a bit different from what I'm used to. Um, so anyway, pretty cool, good good group, great group at 30, and uh, you know a little high from what I had at zero. So actually no drop at all. Uh, I think I'm at uh, I'm going to go back to 50 yards now, and uh, I think I'm just going to keep the same aiming point right here at this X. And we'll see, we'll see how much drop we get. So extremely interesting results at 50 yards. This is my aiming point right here, right on the X. I've got all five shots right here. One, two, three, four, five. Um, and, and maybe this is a fluke. I, I will, I will get the 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 10x Magnum back, and that I did the first video on, and I will literally do the do a side by side comparison. But I mean, if that's the case, and maybe it's the way I'm holding it, I don't know. I've got a lot to test. But uh, this is shooting. This is way better performance than, than what that uh, the 10X Magnum had. So, very interesting. I did zero holdover on that. My, my 30 yard group was here, and then same aiming point, my 50 yard group is here. And you guys can see, I can cover that whole 10 shot group with, with just the palm of my hand. I mean, it's all right here. Here's the extreme spread from the 30 and the 50 yard group. Right there that is that is really cool let me zoom in on that for you guys there's the close-up of that you all see that in comparison to my hand that's that's 10 shots these five were from 30 and then these three and these two were from 50 and I had zero holdover I was holding right here dead on with all of these so very good let's try 100 all right 100 yards you can see the target way back there
So 100 yards, there was a significant amount of drop. I tried five more shots, still aiming up here at the X on the head. I've got one pellet that struck right on the very bottom of the paper, and that's it. So I'm gonna cut my distance in half. I'm gonna go back to 75 yards and um, try five more shots at 75 yards and see how we do. Um, Obviously, I think I would predict that we'll hit more in the center of the target with this aiming point. So let's see, 75 yards. All right, 75 yards. Okay, so what I thought was going to happen did happen. As I said, I continued to aim at the same point up here at the head, 75 yards, and here are my hits. One, two, three, four, five. So really a fantastic little group right here with one flyer. Uh, this is going to, I'm going to say that's, that's no more than a four inches from furthest point to furthest point. So, um, you know, I've... Uh, I can very easily, I think, compensate for drop uh, at 75 yards with the scope that I've got, but you know, that's gonna, you're getting to about 20 inches of drop at 100 yards with uh, the Swarm Whisper 22 cal. So, you know, probably, I'll, I'll measure this and give you the exacts so we know what we're dropping. Well, that was super fun. I have to say, I uh, am pleasantly surprised with, with how this did. This was my aiming point, and this, this is overall um, inside the circle. Let's see, that looks like that's, that's about three and three quarter inch from, from this line to this line. And uh, I was aiming at the X right here, and my first five shots are right here, one, two, three, four, five. And that's at 30 yards and I commented on this while I was outside there um, I think it's due to how I was not holding the the gun and I was just kind of letting it free recoil um, I'm anxious to do another video to test the different ways of holding it and see how that changes your point of impact that'll be coming very soon but uh, either way you know um, nice little group very nice little group I can I've got uh, well let's measure it out there that five shot group is uh, is less than an inch and a half. So you've got less than an inch and a half five shot group at 30 yards. Um, you know, with just the random ammo that I chose. Uh, again, this is not, I know people like to comment, that's a terrible group, blah, blah, whatever. This is the first random pellet that I tried. So sure, you could probably get that smaller. It probably could get bigger too, though. An inch and, inch and a half um, with, without even testing anything, pretty good. I backed up to 50 yards, same aiming point, and here are all my shots. One, two, three, of course, right here's my aiming point. My hits are one, two, three, four, five, right there. So, um, again, really, really good. And I would argue, let's see, that is from the extreme spread on that is going to be two and one eighth of an inch. Two and one eighth of an inch at 50 yards. That's extremely good. And you'd have to go back and watch my first video. Um, on the Swarm Magnum 10X and, and, and see, I can't recall, I'm thinking that is better. That, so this actually grouped better, but again, the ammo matters and I don't think this is the same ammo that I used in the, uh, in the other one. This is Premier, this is made by Crossman. It's pointed and 14.3 grain. Seems to shoot, shoot really well, you know, I mean that's that's killing squirrels, really, even even at 50 yards, probably. Um, so then I backed up from, from 50 yards, I backed up to 100, because that's actually what I did in the Swarm Magnum video. And in that, I can remember exactly what my drop was. It had 12 inches of drop at 100 yards. And uh, this is, let's see, my target here, from to my aim point up there that's 21 inches to my aiming point 
I tried five shots at 100 yards with the Swarm Whisper 10X, and I only ended up getting one catching right down here on the very bottom. So they were dropping um, over 20 inches at 100 yards. So what I did, I, I dropped the target back to 75, as you guys saw, continued to aim here, and then most of my shots were one, two, three, four, and then I had, a, had one up here, but most of those are within a, uh, that's an extreme spread of four inches, four inches extreme spread on that at 75 yards with an overall drop of, to the center of that group, an overall drop of 11 inches to the center of that group. So, um, 11 inch drop at 75 yards with the Swarm Whisper 10X and 12 inches of drop at 100 yards with the Swarm Magnum 10X 22 caliber. So definitely a difference in, in, your, in your speed with those two. Um, but this is definitely, you know, I, I think that's probably losing so much speed at 100 that I would question its, its lethality. I'm going to test that too. I'm going to do some tests on penetration and I'll, I'll release that video here in the next month or so. But, um, you know, overall, uh, and this scope has um, uh, a tree in it that I can do some, some different drop compensations for. So, uh, you know, I think that this thing is at least going to be viable to uh, 50 yards, definitely, once I learn it really well, and probably even, you know, shoot a rabbit or something out to to 75 yards once I really get to know it. So I, uh, I'm pleasantly surprised. I'm very pleasantly surprised with the Swarm Whisper 10X. I've got a bunch of different ammo ordered right now and I'm going to do a bunch more testing. If you all are interested in this very gun right here, check out my video description. I have the link to Amazon to this exact gun and I will put you the link to the ammo that I have uh, chosen also that I used in this test. And please subscribe to the channel. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm very addicted at this point. I've got tons of other videos of long range and hunting and all that kind of stuff. Uh, gun reviews even. But I'm just now getting into this pellet stuff and I'm, I'm addicted. You guys are going to see a lot more videos. I'm going to I'm, I'm going to test penetration with this gun at various ranges. I've got multiple different ammo choices coming. I'm going to do different ammo tests. I'm going to test how the gun responds with different holds or free recoil or in a tripod. I'm going to compare this gun to the Magnum that I did the previous review with. I also have been able to acquire a 17 caliber in that Gamo Swarm Magnum 10X. So I am going to end up doing quite a bit of stuff with those three guns over the next few months. And I'm very excited about it. This pellet gun stuff is super cool. Right now, ammo is so hard to find for, for your center of fire stuff and everything that I'm used to shooting. So it's a great time to get into pellet rifles. And uh, I'm glad that I ended up making this choice. This was a super cool little gun. Very excited to test it more. I hope to have you guys subscribe to the channel, turn on your notifications. I'm putting videos out every single week. Check out the channel. Check out all my other videos. Oh, I want to want to tell you too. Be sure to check out HuntShootLive.com. Got a cool website with uh, some different articles and things on there. Kind of taking a different flow with the website than what we've got on social media or on the YouTube page. Check us out on Facebook and Instagram, and you can reach out to me on there if you want to. You guys keep the comments coming. I appreciate all the feedback that I'm getting and all the cool interest that everybody has out there um, on the pellet rifles and the different uh, things that's going on in the world of air rifles. But I appreciate you guys. We'll catch you next time. God bless you.